Hi, welcome again to Meet Our X Success Stories. And I'm Brooke, a coach here at Meet Our X. And today I'm happy to um, be speaking with Elaine, who's going to share with us her carnivore journey. Hi, Elaine. How are you? Hi, Brooke. I'm good. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And <laughs> thank you again for um, for sharing with our listeners what's been going on for you with the carnivore diet and how it's how it's treating you. Glad to. And so. When did you get started and how did you get started eating this? Well, I'll go, I'll go back about nine years to when I discovered how to do low carb and keto. Um, at the time I was a, my very heaviest. I weighed 272 pounds. I was type two diabetic and I had high blood pressure and the more I read about it and listened and studied it, the more it sounded like the right thing for me. And so I jumped in and slowly began to lose weight. And, and for me, it was a wonderful journey of learning how to eat right that worked for my body. Um, and the, the happy part about all that was within about a year, I was able to get off medication for type two diabetes and for high blood pressure, my doctor's blessing, um, and still off of medications for that, which is really, really great. Now, I, I'm a tall girl, I'm five foot 10. And um, so 272 pounds was a lot of weight on my body, um, but I can carry more than your average woman because I'm so tall. And uh, so I, I lost weight and, and it certainly wasn't a beautiful graph of, look, here's my highest weight and there's my lowest. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> it was all over the place. And then I sort of got stuck around the 220s, 210. I'd go up and down 10 pounds. And I know this about me, my body gains weight super easy. So it's just my reality. And I was sort of like looking for the next thing. What, what is going to get me farther down the scale? And, and but beyond the being vain and wanting to be thinner, I, you know, I, I have diabetes that is potentially there, you know, that I'm fortunately controlling very, very well and still off meds for. And, and the high blood pressure, which also is doing really great. All numbers are great there. But um, I've also got a family history of knee problems and I've already had a minor surgery on one knee and I've got my dad and his mom who've had theirs replaced. And I, I'd prefer to keep these knees as long as I can. And I know after seeing the inside of my knee, <laughs> my doctor showed me the video and uh, I've seen the inside of my body, which it wasn't as gross as you'd think. There was no blood or anything. He just showed me this little camera view um, while he was cleaning up a torn meniscus. And he said, see this white area at the top of the knee? That's your, that's the inside of your cartilage. And he said, all see the little white things hanging down? That's arthritis. And so he was taking this little tool and he was shaving off the arthritis, those little shredded bits, you know? And um, I've just thought so many times, wow, I, uh, I need to do my body the biggest favor I can and keep as much weight off those joints as possible. So I uh, went on a low carb cruise back in May of 2018. I think I, think I was about 222 pounds at that point. Can I, and, ask, uh, can I jump in and ask you something here? Yes, yes, so yes. So at this point, what, what were you eating? Because keto is such a broad term. It can be defined in so many different ways, really. It can. Um, um, I, I do have the, the concept in my head that it's best for me to eat 20 grams of carbs a day or less total. I don't, I don't subscribe to the net carb thing. There's been a lot of controversy about that and it just works better. And I, I can check my blood with a ketone meter and, and find out if I'm in ketosis, which I haven't done in a while, but, but it's a, if you stay, if I stay under 20 grams total per day, that, that will 
keep me in ketosis. And so typically I would have had, you know, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner back then and would have been, you know, eggs and cheese and like a breakfast meat. Um, I've very much steered clear of carbs, um, you know, to keep my blood sugar in check because it was such a point of pride for me to get off medication that I knew I didn't want to go back on, but I also knew I needed to keep losing weight. So, you know, I, I do watch, I don't eat grains or beans or starches or sugars. Um, and I haven't in a very long time. And even, even artificial sweeteners don't do so great with me. Um, so that would be a typical breakfast and lunch, probably, you know, um, like a hamburger patty and some cheese and bacon or, you know, maybe some broccoli and dinner could be kind of the same thing or a steak or chicken. Okay. So it was meat based keto you were eating. It, yeah, uh, there was always meat there. It was never a vegetarian based, never vegan. Um, you know, I've, I've always been a meat eater, always loved it. And, and I did have keto desserts. Like I'd make little things. And I, while I was doing all this, I was actually traveling on the road. I traveled from 2002 until last year as a professional musician in musicals across the United States and Canada. So I did keto on the road, either in hotels or Airbnbs. And um, I managed to do this crazy life and live this crazy life and do it on the road. And what it took for me was like getting to, you know, making, going and getting groceries uh, a priority you know, so it can be done. Uh, yeah. But um, it was when I heard this um, lecture on the low carb cruise, and, and I had, I'd sort of been listening to the carnivore world start to begin its rumbles back in 2018. And so and, and I try to listen to a lot of podcasts and watch YouTube things and feed my brain with good info to keep me motivated. Because you know, weight is always going to be a struggle for me. Um, and, and there's a lot of great people out there giving out great information. And in, in this lecture on the cruise, it was Dr. Ken Berry talking about how he'd been doing carnivore for about seven months. And part of his lecture said that he, his heritage is mostly Viking, if I remember right. I hope I'm right, Dr. Berry. <laughs> um, and that his body seemed to respond very well to it. It, it cleared up some um, readiness in his skin and he had dropped weight without even trying. I think at the time he maybe had dropped about 17 pounds. And, um, and he said, it's, some of it's dependent on your, your heritage, although we may know more at this point than that. But after the lecture, I went up to him and I said, Dr. Barry, I am a type two diabetic. I'm 55 or so back then. I'm 58 now. I am of Scottish ancestry and I um, am in menopause. Would a carnivore eating plan be good for somebody like me? And he went, yep, in his wonderful Tennessee accent. And I decided when I got home from that cruise, which I had taken with a friend of mine, a dear friend Miriam, um, when I got home, well, actually, when I got back to my tour <laughs> after the cruise, uh, which was in Toronto, I decided I'm going to try carnivore starting on June 1st because I think I had like two days till the till June 1st when I got back to Toronto, and I would have a month there with the show. I was I was at the time I was with Phantom of the Opera, and um, I was going to give it a 30 day try and see how I'd do through the month because of gotten to the point where I like to try things for a while to see if they work with me or not sure. and give it a start and an end date and see and assess. So luckily Toronto has some fabulous butcher shops. I mean, oh gosh, I can't remember the, the name of this beautiful one. I, I believe the name in Spanish means great meat or something like that. Yes. And I would walk a couple of miles to this butcher shop where they had like a whole case of aged beef and you could choose from that case if you wanted or from the counter 
and you could get the most gorgeous like ribeye steaks with tons of fat on them. Um, they, they carried duck and duck eggs and just, it was just such a beautiful selection. And the, the little building I was staying in with a friend of mine um, at the top of the apartment building had a deck with grills. So I could go outside and grill these beautiful steaks in the wonderful summer there in Toronto. And I, I started doing that June 1st in 2018. And uh, I pretty much kind of settled in real simply. And I think also in addition to carnivore, I was deciding to just do one meal a day. Because I'd done a lot of fasting the year before, like I had a stint where I did 99 days on and off, but I kept uh, going back to it. It was a lot. And, like, um, like, a, like a week of fasting or something? Yeah, like wow. the biggest one was 21 days. Oh my goodness. It was like yeah, biblical. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't do it again. Um, I don't need to prove that to myself again. Yeah, yeah. But it was, it's pretty amazing how long you can go without food if you, yes. if you don't need it. Um, I'm going to apologize because it sounds like one of my housemates is coming home and I'll just wave at him. Um, anyway, um, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to give one meal a day carnivore a try. And that was the June experiment. And what I ended up having most days was a wonderful, beautiful ribeye steak. And I know this is going to, anybody that's watching this is going to go, What? I would cook in the oven on a roasting pan that I traveled with me. I would cook a package of bacon, not a few pieces, a whole package of bacon <laughs> and eat it. And nobody, <laughs> that delicious bacon. stuff. Delicious. Absolutely. The place yeah. always smelled heavenly, you know, and, um, you know, and I, I carried a little cheap, you know, bathroom scale with me and got it at Walmart. Sorry. I hope it's okay to mention the name. Oh, um, that's fine. It was, just a cheap little digital scale that I could, you know, and it didn't weigh itself, didn't weigh much. So I could put it in my suitcase and it was easy to travel. So I did that month and I would check my weight and I had a little bit of tummy distress at first because my body was just getting used to something different within about four or five days that cleared up and nothing that was painful and nothing that kept me out of work. It was just, Oh, okay. <laughs> Something's going on there. Well, and, let me uh, can I just ask you. So that month yeah. you were just doing meat, uh -huh. but were you also doing eggs? And I don't think so. I think I was okay. just. So thin. then you dropped what what plants you were doing before yes. on yes. keto, which is why broccoli yes. and maybe some greens or salads or yes. something. Yes. So you yes. dropped those and you dropped the eggs. Yeah. And, and dairy. Did you drop dairy for a while? You know, I ended up doing this for a year because it worked so well. Mm -hmm. And dairy would come and go through it. Okay, so you're um, eating dairy. In the form of cheese. Uh-huh. And maybe eggs would come and go? Yeah, eggs huh? were never a problem. Um, in fact, I, I like eggs a lot. And I, I just kind of forget about them sometimes. Yeah. But, so you, dropped, but, you just dropped plants. Mostly you were dropping plants. Yep. All the plants went yeah. away all the artificial sweeteners went away. Uh -huh. um, and by the end of that month, I had dropped seven pounds. Uh -huh. And I'm like, okay, so where I've struggled to get anything to go down below 220, this wasn't hard. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do a second month and see how I do. And what I found out was, pretty much every month I could drop seven pounds. That's great. And I've never been a thin girl. I, in, even in high school days, and now again, I'm tall, but even in high school days, I weighed 195 and getting into college, it started going higher and higher. And, and I tried a lot of different plans that just, I just, I rebelled against them against them because I didn't like the food. Keto was the only food that I liked long-term. Um, but carnivore, I, I totally felt great. You know, like I could go a whole day without eating and not be starving and ravenous, but then know that around 
late afternoon is usually when I would eat because I would try to eat before our shows, which are usually around 7.30 or 8 at night. So I'd try to get in a meal about five. That seemed practical. It felt awesome. Man, I went to bed on a, you know, not full stomach and losing the weight. And it just kept coming off and I kept doing it. And the only exercise I was doing was going for a walk you know and fortunately with the tours you're you're usually in a downtown area and like toronto itself is yeah. really pedestrian friendly so there's lots of places i could go for walks and explore things but it was never you know more than like a half hour to an hour at the most you know and i i just i thrived on it i really did well and i got down to my lowest adult weight ever i got down to 167 pounds and I learned something about myself that while I liked the way I looked in clothes at that weight, um, and I liked the shape of my face, which I'm heavier right now, um, I didn't have any rear end. <laughs> I, it hurt to sit down. You lost your booty. <laughs> I lost my booty. And, it, you know, and I'd like sit in the orchestra pits and I'd be like, ow, I'm glad I've got a pillow. Ow. <laughs> it was really kind of funny. And um, so then <laughs> I, I did, I did full on carnivore for, for a year. And then I just started adding in things like more dairy and maybe not doing one meal a day. And I just kind of, I kind of slacked off a bit because I'd been so focused and, and strict that I took a break for a while and then we got to February of 2020 and I was doing great. I was hovering around about once between 170 and 180, which is really a good spot for me. And then the mounting stress of not only a very angry political system going on in our country, but also the pandemic rearing up and the unknowns of everything i i ended up actually because my tour had just closed in february and then we start seeing all the issues about covid in march of 2020 um i actually didn't feel comfortable here in my home i i have two dear friends that live here with me and one is a nurse but she works only for a family that has um a, a very ill child in their home so she's not in and out of hospitals a lot so I wasn't really worried about her so much but my other friend drives for uber and I was so afraid of that virus coming in through him and I just I called some friends that I knew had some space they had an extra little house on a ranch in Texas where I am and it was like an hour 40 from here and I said do you still have that little house that's is it available right now and she and this is my same friend that went on the cruise with me she said yeah I said can I come stay for a while and she went sure and I told her why she goes come on and I packed up and I was out of here and so for about nine months I lived out on that ranch and I will say that I didn't I didn't handle the stress of life and being unemployed because of COVID and the, the fear of the virus and our everything that was going on I I I let weight creep on like 30 32 pounds and I was not happy with it and I couldn't seem to stop it I would try I would try to start I would try to start and I was just not doing well and then January of this year or actually the end of December last year I <laughs> randomly tripped over a bag of tools that had fallen over in the little house on the ranch and I broke not only my wrist and but I also broke my foot and I had to come back home to Dallas by that time I wasn't so much afraid of the virus because I knew the vaccines were coming around the bend and I had to be back in Dallas to get in my health insurance network so I was here and I'm healed I've healed up great I've done really really well I've been gardening like crazy in my backyard and lifting heavy stones and putting in pathways and digging and my bones have healed great. The doctors say, 
do everything you've done in the past, you know, and I haven't had any pain. I'm really grateful for that. And still wasn't able to get right back on track with the food. I was just kept playing with like keto desserts and, and I had been doing a lot of diet sodas, which I had pulled out of my life. And finally something in me at the end of April of this year. So just last month, finally, just something went, you, you keep doing this little game that you're doing and not really committing to anything. You're going to end up at 272 pounds again. You know how fast you can gain weight. You know how easily your body gains weight. You're going to be right back there and you're going to think, well, I didn't do it, but who else did, you know? And I decided May 1st of 2021 that I am just going to give one meal a day carnivore another try. And because it worked so well, I liked it. I didn't want to rebel against it. I loved it. You know, I just had slowly gotten off the path. So I get month. up for it. Yeah. So it's been a month as of yesterday. And I, the only thing I did that wasn't carnivore, and here we've got a cat coming to visit, um, was every now and then I'd have some really great refrigerator pickles with my steak. And that didn't seem to make any difference. And then there's cattail. <laughs> and, um, and then a few times I would make this wonderful pork belly, put it in the, I'd roast it in the oven and coat it with all these spices. And then because I'd put some oregano on it, of course the house smelled heavenly. It smelled like Italian food. I thought, oh, that marinara sauce I bought would go, and it was a very low carb marinara sauce that would be really good with this maybe. And I tried it and it was delicious. So I had over <laughs> like a two week period, I had one jar of marinara sauce, but that's it. Everything else has been full on carnivore, one meal a day. And I am very happy to report as of yesterday, when I got on the scales, I was 10 pounds down. Great. In so one like 10 pounds this, this past month. Yep. And so yeah. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to, I'm going to get back down to between 170, 180, which seems to be the sweet spot for this tall body. And then just try to maintain it, you know, um, and it, carnivore is easy. It's, it's so quick to make dinner because yeah. I like, a, I've always liked uh, rare beef. So making a steak in my cast iron skillet is a breeze. It takes less than five minutes and done dinner's it done so easy yeah so it's are you so eating, easy you said you're eating one meal a day again mm -hmm. do yeah you drink coffee? i do drink black coffee mm -hmm. because i have a real hard time controlling if i if i use heavy cream <laughs> look at this massive mug <laughs> <laughs> like a joke it's so big <laughs> but um i love cream in my coffee, you know, and I understand, you know, I understand that if you read the label on a carton of cream, it looks like it's a zero carb food. My problem is I can't limit how much cream. I like a lot of cream, like, yeah. like a quarter cup, you know, it's ridiculous how much I like. Well, it took some digging around because, you know, you read the label and it'll say zero carb because the oh, serving the size, carbs. Yeah, there are definitely some carbs. Yeah. It, it was not easy to find out the truth, but if you did a cup of heavy cream, which I know that's a lot, but it's 6.6 .6 grams of carbs. So it's not completely free. There's carbs and it's a lot of fat. I mean, there's, there's it carbs is. in eggs, there's carbs in liver, yeah. there's carbs yeah. in seafood. You know, there's, yeah. there's plenty of carbs out there in the animal yeah. kingdom. So I yeah. actually don't worry too much about, about carbs myself in that way. Are um, you, are you full on carnivore? I mean, I have been for about three years, but, but now I'm great. actually, now I actually, um, I've introduced some other things, but, yeah. but, but I still, um, am very cognizant about, about plants and about yeah. vegetables and the anti-nutrients <clears throat> inherent in plants. Yeah. So, so if I add things, they're usually not, um, vegetables. Yeah, I understand. And, and isn't it like kind of just experimenting to figure out what works best for your body and what Absolutely. makes you feel best? And you know, it doesn't, I mean, unless you're working on um, some autoimmune condition where let's say nightshades like marinara sauce might be really difficult yeah. uh, to, to use with that. 
Um, yeah. But unless you're working on that, on those kinds of things, then, you know, if you're eating 90% of your food from 95%, 90%, 85% from, from animal foods, then that's an animal food diet. So. Yep. I agree. And it's easy for me to be at least 95 to 98% carnivore because I've yeah. always liked it. It's never been, I've never yeah, had it. Yeah, it sounds a, like even when you were keto, you included yeah. plenty of, of animal food and meat, you know, which isn't always the case. You know, some people really, they, you know, they rely on, uh, you know, vegetable fats and lots of crucivus vegetables and, yeah. and keto. And then the carbs, you know, is our nuts or something. But um, yeah, yeah, so there's a lots of ways to, to describe a keto diet for sure. Yeah, definitely. There's, and there's, there's, everybody kind of has their own version of it, you know, and, and I've, I've just. And not all, not I've, all carnivores are focused on staying in ketosis. True. You know, it's, not, true. it's not really the, it's not really the, the goal. Exactly. I know that I've got a couple of barometers in my body. One is, you know, if my blood sugar goes out of control, I know there's probably some food source that's causing a problem. And fortunately, that's very well in control. Even, even at the end of last year, before I really committed back to this, even with not being perfect on carnivore, my HA1C was 5.2. And that's really a great range because any normal blood sugar would live between mm -hmm. about 4.5 to 5.5. So I was still in a great range, even without any medicine. Now I was never insulin dependent, which I'm grateful for that, but I was on a, a pill for a while, for many, many years. Um, but, but my blood pressure was also good still. Um, How but I know, sleeping? what's that? How was your sleeping? How was oh, your sleeping? Sleep is not great. And, and it's, I don't think it's, um, you know, a keto or carnivore thing. I think it's when I hit menopause a couple of years ago, and even leading up to that, what I would find is I have this issue of I can go to sleep and I cannot stay asleep. Mm -hmm. I wake up sometimes at two, sometimes at three, sometimes at four. Once in a while, I'll have a great night's sleep. Um, Does it help like, you to eat, uh, eat something before you go to bed? Have you noticed? I don't know because I don't usually eat later. It, I find that I just kind of feel better tummy wise and eating earlier. Like, um, but yeah, I, you know what I did? I worked out in the garden this last week, not too, just a few days ago, actually, until late. And then I talked to my friend outside and I didn't, I didn't have dinner till eight. Now that you say it, that may have been the night I slept till eight o'clock. <laughs> Maybe I'll need to try eating later again. I mean, I you know, sometimes know. it could help with that cortisol response, you know, sometimes cortisol will, will wake you up and keep you up. Well, and maybe that's my issue because I know that a good walk, like a gentle 30 minute walk, not a big power walk or anything, that'll help lower our cortisol level, our stress hormone. And I haven't been walking. I've only been out in the garden um, doing the thing. And part of it was just healing up from this foot, you know, um, but it's good now. It is, yeah. it feels just normal again, which I'm glad for. So maybe I should, maybe I should add in the walking again. Cause I love it. I love, I love being outside. I I'm not a gym rat. I, I, I much prefer to be outdoors amongst the trees and seeing what people have planted in their yards. And stuff. Nice. I mean, it sounds like you're back on track. It, it, you know, it took me one day, May 1st. Yeah. And I was like, well, you know, you're feels... kind of a veteran at this from being yeah. keto for a long time. Yeah. It sounds yeah. like you kind of know, you kind of know when you're, when you've, you know, when you're off track or how far yes. you've been, um, and what to do. It sounds like yeah. you, you have a, a good idea of how to do it. I oh, I want so. to ask you, are you yeah. eating organ meat? Do you eat liver? Or those? Um, I haven't, but no, for no reason other than it's difficult to find. I don't have oh. a, a good butcher shop nearby, but I do like it. And, and, and I, you know, I think I read not so long ago that beef liver is like the most nutritious food in the whole world. And it is a superfood for sure. It, yeah. And I like it. You know, I used to nod as a kid. I was like, don't make me, you know, but now I'm like, 
that's kind of weird and I like it, you know? Good for you. Um, so yeah, it'd be cool with eating that. And yeah, like, you could add that in too. And maybe I could just mail order some, you know, because I knew there are oh, some yeah. great farms that, you know, really are treating their animals humanely. And yeah, I mean, you're in the heart of, of ranch country. Really. I really am. Yeah. You know, and part of when we were there, um, when I was there at the ranch with my friends and, and uh, my friend, they're both, she and her husband are, are keto. Um, I, we'd gotten that first stimulus check from the government, which was 600. And I, and, and we, at that point, this was like April, I think we didn't know. We kept hearing these rumors that all the meat packing places were having trouble with the virus yeah. and having to shut down and this and that. And I'm like, what's going to happen to our food supply? And I talked to them and I said, guys, you know, you're doing me a huge favor. You're letting me stay here on this ranch. I feel safe out of here. And I, I, I appreciate that you're here and I want to pay it back in a way, you know, and I tried to, in, in a number of ways, you know, like helping redecorate the little house and, and, and I said, Miriam, can you find a rancher that we could buy some beef from? Yeah. And she went, sure. We got plenty to go to our church, you know? So she right. talked to this guy and we bought a quarter side of beef and put it in my car and put it in her deep freeze. And thank you, Uncle Sam, for paying for that meat. And of course, fortunately, we didn't lose groceries at the grocery store. You know, I mean, it was sort of a little empty there for a while, but, but we were never like in danger of starving. But, you know, and they were happy because it was beef, you know, and something fun that came out of that was, um, unfortunately, my friends got sick with the virus because they had traveled. Of course, I stayed away from them. Their, their house was a good 200 yards away from mine and but but her husband called and he said Miriam's been watching these videos on how to grind beef and if dad brings over their kitchen aid and the meat grinder attachment that we just bought would you watch these videos and grind up this big old brisket that we got from the rancher and I went, okay and yeah. so we we hooked up and what you do is you freeze the grinder you get the parts nice and cold and then attach it. it's real simple to do all right cat hair um and uh the only thing i learned in that was you need a really really good sharp knife because i didn't have a super sharp knife so it was a lot more work to cube the brisket and um, but you just drop it in the grinder and then it grinds his beef eye opening how Absolutely. delicious and 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 what a nice texture your own freshly ground beef is yeah you can and add I, lamb you can add liver you can add hearts you can oh i didn't think about liver oh that sounds good you well know, i i got myself a good sharp knife you know or mail ordered one and then i did the other half of the brisket another day and then i added some ham in oh and, nice that was good. And then another time I did some stew meat, which was already cubed from the grocery store. And that made it really easy. And I threw in, you could buy pork fat here in Texas. So I put some pork fat in with the stew meat and it just, it is the best ground beef patty I've ever had, even in like good restaurants. When it's freshly ground, there is no comparison. And I really do want to get a grinder now because wow. now I'm a big fan. So that was a cool thing I learned. All right. Now, what a great use of the stimulus check. It's a win-win. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. It, Very good. It was nice, you know, because you knew exactly you were you were supporting a rancher. Yeah. And uh, he he said he was a, gra I believe he was, he's a guy that believes in grass feeding the cows. And and so uh, that was neat. And, you know, the my friend's, uh parents own this big ranch where I stayed and they have I think it's 183 or 187 acres it's a lot of land and one of the pastures they lease out to local ranchers and so I'd go take my walks when when it was nice weather and I'd walk past the cows and they'd usually come like real close to the fence and they'd kind of look at me and so I'd like take out my music and I'd have my phone and I'd turn it on where the speaker and they'd they'd stand there and they'd listen to the music they just like cocking their heads and nice and I, I think they really like the bluegrass music <laughs> of course <laughs> nice 
Oh, very nice. That sounds really nice. It sounds like it was really lovely out there, actually. It was. It was a great, safe place. And I, at the time, I, you know, wasn't working. And I, 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 I figured out how to make a, a mask um, that for basically for singers, it was a lady, for a friend of a friend in Canada that invented this pattern. And um, uh, it, it just helps you open your mouth fully when you sing and the mask doesn't slip off. And so I, I started making these and people kept asking for them. And I, I ended up getting universities and choirs that were needing them. I ended up making 1,300 masks. Oh my goodness. So you, oh, you are quite industrious. I, well, I, I like to keep my hands busy and, <laughs> and oh, and I, I forgot to, to mention, you know, I sort of mentioned the barometer thing about my body telling me if I've eaten well or not. My hands are the other thing because for a professional pianist, you would think I'd take great care of my hands and I really do try to, but um, because of a bike accident, two years ago, I had to have surgery to repair a broken wrist here. And then December, this one was not as bad a break, but I've broken bro both wrists. Wow. And the hard part is it has triggered a syndrome that you, it's called Dupuytren's and it's also called trigger fingers. If you've ever heard of somebody having trigger finger, it's the same yeah. thing. I have heard and, of trigger finger. Yeah. Pain. And what it well, it is painful, and what it does is it can it deposits collagen along your tendon sheath, and it you'll get nodes and cords in your hands. And some people end up like with a finger that's bent down yeah. like that, and they yeah. literally can't. It's like locked there; they can't bend it back. And sometimes it's their whole hand. And I've been officially diagnosed with this hideous disease. But as you can see, my fingers are flat. Good, very good. Um, they say it, it's it's still in a very manageable position if you can put your hands down on table flat and it doesn't oh. hurt. It doesn't hurt. But I do, because there is no great cure. There are surgeries, there's radiation therapy, like when somebody has cancer, there's cortisone shots, there's... Um, yeah. There's even a, they call needle aponeurotomy. It's a thing where they literally take a needle and break up the cords or nodules. It's all of it just, and, and everybody that has it, there's at least 50% of the people that get a treatment done and it comes right back. And I don't want another surgery. I don't, I don't want my body cut open if I don't have to. And I'm just opting to stretch. I, when I first broke this wrist, I could do that. And now I'm here and I can, I'm in a very good flexible place with my fingers. There's no contraction, but if I eat bad food for my body, it's, and it's, it's always the carbs. If I do that in the next morning, I am guaranteed to wake up and I feel like I've got, well, I don't feel like I, I have very, very stiff fingers and it hurts and to I literally have to wake my hands up. I have to do when this. you say <laughs> it's always the carbs, you know, carbs are all different. So do, have you associated with particular plants? Um, well, especially last year when I was eating stupid things like sugar free cookies from the grocery so store, flour and terrible. Maybe, well, well sugar free is probably flour and probably some crappy oils. Yep. Oils. Crappy oils and, um, artificial sweeteners that don't do your digestion any favor. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think seed like oil is really a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Seed oil seem to, to aggravate it. Um, and even I'll be honest, when I had that marinara sauce, even this month, I would be a little bit more stiff. Oh, I, de I definitely, I definitely see it with nightshades. Do you? Um, yeah. Well, at yeah. the beginning of May, when I started this one meal a day, I also thought, some of the people in some of the forums that I follow for this hand syndrome have had some, some, some success with turmeric, which is uh, anti-inflammatory and mixed with black pepper. We'll see. I've been doing that. Since yeah, I mean, it's mixed with that. black pepper, you know, it's because the black pepper really opens up the, opens yes. up the, uh, the gut junctions. And so the turmeric yeah. is absorbed, which is sort of like, well, I don't know if you want those gut junctions to open up. 
True. And I may, it may not be my answer, but I thought, well, I'll give it a try. Like I bought a bottle of capsules and, and I've been doing that. And really my hand stiffness since in the month of May has decreased 50% at least. It's not gone, but it's on its way. And, you know, I could easily do like a month where I don't do the turmeric and, and, and then also be really strict carnivore. Like I could, I could make June that month because I haven't even haven't had my meal yet today. I could do that and just kind of, just to kind of gauge to see if it's. I think Sean is carnivore. calling June autoimmune June. So that's probably, oh, probably well, getting then it's a good month, before. right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and is that Auto- Dr. Sean Baker? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, so the MeetRx platform is there if you ever want any kind of support or the meetings yeah. and, the, and that first month is free if you want to join and oh and that's very nice i looked at your website when you when you reached out to me on facebook about this this meeting today and it's a great website and i and i, I saw his uh there's a video of his and yeah, i had watched great. a number of his interviews and really yeah. dig what his, his message has to say because it i yeah, think it really does interview. work yeah it really does work for a lot of people and you know, I've, I've not only gotten rid of the diabetes and high blood pressure, but I had, I'm being Scottish. I'm very prone to red skin anyway. And I had a lot of, I've been diagnosed with rosacea, but I don't have any makeup on and there are no spots. Lovely. Nothing on me. <laughs> it looks so like it's clear doing great. Up. Sounds like it's Thanks. doing great. Yeah. And um, I want to thank you for Oh, sharing gosh, with yeah. us that whole experience in fact that whole that whole covid nightmare that we've all lived through too so yeah we all have yeah. haven't we it's, yeah we it's have been, and it's I'm, been I'm, an extraordinary year hasn't it yes it has, it has. <laughs> and i'm glad that you're that you're moving through it and things are good and you're back on feeling good about the track you're on thank you so much it was lovely speaking with you brooke oh thank you elaine thank you for sharing with us thank you take care Okay, you too.